Hello. In this video, I will be talking about selection sort. I will give a walkthrough of the algorithm, including an example, followed by a discussion on the runtime complexity using big O notation, and a proof of correctness of the algorithm by using loop invariance. As a recap from the previous video, selection sort is just one algorithm to tackle the sorting problem. Our input is going to be an array A of n numbers, and our output is going to be a reordering or a permutation of A such that A1 is less than or equal to A2, which is less than or equal to A3, and so on. Let's take a look at the selection sort algorithm through the use of pseudocode. The general idea is that we have two subarrays, a sorted subarray and an unsorted subarray. When we begin, the sorted subarray is empty and the unsorted subarray consists of all the elements in A. The algorithm searches through the unsorted subarray looking for the smallest element, keeping track of this through the use of min index. We then swap the minimum element with the leftmost unsorted element. Thus, we build up the sorted subarray on the left-hand side and we shrink the unsorted subarray on the right. An example should hopefully make this process clearer. Let's consider the array on the right-hand side. It consists of five elements and is currently unsorted. Prior to executing the outer loop, the sorted subarray is empty and the unsorted subarray, again, is simply the entire array. We then enter the outer loop. We set i to 1 and the min index is 1. We then search through the right-hand subarray looking for a smaller element. Is 3 less than 4? Yes. So we update the min index. We then proceed in the inner loop. Is 1 less than 3? Yes. So again, we update the min index now to 3. And again, we proceed in the inner loop. Is 5 less than 1? No. So we don't need to update the min index. Is 2 less than 1? No. So once again, we don't need to update the min index. The inner loop has now reached the end of the array, so we exit the inner loop and we swap element at min index with the leftmost unsorted element. So we swap A1 and A3, giving us the following. And the outer loop now proceeds. The left-hand subarray consists of just one element, and this is in sorted order. The right-hand subarray from I onwards is still in the unsorted order. I is 2 and min index is 2. We search through the right-hand side of the subarray looking for a smaller element, if one exists. Is 4 less than 3? No, so we don't need to update the min index. Is 5 less than 3? No, so we don't need to update the min index. Finally, is 2 less than 3? Yes, so we update the min index. The inner loop has reached the end of the array, so we exit the inner loop and we perform the swap. The left-hand subarray now consists of A1 and A2 and is sorted and the right-hand subarray from i onwards is still in the unsorted order. i is 3 and the min index is 3. We repeat the process, finding that the min element is at index 5. We swap the two elements, and now the sorted subarray grows by an element and the unsorted subarray shrinks. And then finally, we complete the process, giving us the final full sorted array. Let's now demonstrate that our algorithm for selection sort is correct by using loop invariance. 
Our algorithm contains two for loops. Therefore, there are two different loop invariants to consider, one for the outer for loop and one for the inner for loop. Let's begin by taking a look at the inner loop and the loop invariant for that. So our loop invariant states that before the start of each iteration, a min index is less than or equal to elements in the subarray a, i through j. So in other words, min index refers to the index of the smallest element in that subarray. We then, as always, have three conditions that need to hold. So before the first iteration of the inner loop, j is equal to i. Therefore, the subarray to consider is simply a i. Previously, min index was set to the index i, so min index indexes the only element in that subarray. The loop invariant holds. Moving on to show the second condition. Before iteration j plus 1, we assume that min index is the index of the smallest element in the subarray a i through j. During iteration j plus 1, we have two cases to consider. Either a j plus 1 is less than a min index. In this case, we update the min index to the new location j plus 1. So after iteration j plus 1, min index is the index of the smallest element in the subarray a i through j plus 1. The second case is that a j plus 1 is greater than or equal to a min index. In this case, we don't need to update the min index. It's already the index of the smallest element in a i through to j plus 1. And then finally, at the end of the inner loop, min index is the index of an element less than or equal to all elements in a, i through j. So min index is the index of the smallest element in a, i through to n. Let's now tackle the loop invariant for the outer loop. Our loop invariant is going to be that after iteration i, the i minimum elements of a are in ascending sorted order in positions 1 to i. Remember at the start when I said that in selection sort we have a sorted subarray and an unsorted subarray. Effectively what we're saying here is that as we progress we build up that left hand side sorted subarray. So before the first iteration of the outer loop i equals 0. Therefore, the subarray with the sorted elements is empty. The loop invariant holds. Then, before iteration i plus 1, we assume that the i minimum elements of a, 1 through i, are in ascending sorted order. When the inner loop completes, min index refers to the index of the smallest element in a, i plus 1 through to n. Since a... 1 through i consists of the i smallest elements. Min index is the i plus 1 smallest element. We move this to a i plus 1 via the swap. After the swap and at the end of the iteration of the outer loop, a1 through i consists of the i smallest elements in positions 1 to i. So when the outer loop terminates, i is the length of the array. Therefore, we can conclude that a1 through to n has all elements of a, but in ascending order. Let's now take a look at the big O for selection sort, remembering that big O is concerned with the worst case, which for selection sort is going to be an array in descending order. The outer loop iterates n times. For each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop iterates n minus i times. For example, if n equals 5, when i equals 1, j goes from 2, 3, 4 to 5. When i equals 2, j goes from 3, 4 to 5. 
and so on. We therefore do n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus so on comparisons on line 4. This is n times n minus 1 all over 2. The complexity can therefore be estimated as a big O of n squared. For the best case and the average case for selection sort, we also have the order n squared. This is because the inner loop does a linear search. It doesn't terminate early. It has to iterate over the entire subarray because we do not know beforehand where the minimum element is. As always, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's cleared any doubts and answered any questions that you may have had on selection sort. Please remember to like and subscribe and I hope to see you in a later video.